With commercial 5G deployments on the horizon, interest in the network edge is at an all-time high. Renu, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Why all this focus in the industry around edge solutions? Why are they important? So I think uh, 5G is um, accelerating you know, the edge transformation. Um, and if you look at it, I like to think of the edge as being the first instantiation of 5G deployments. Um, because with a transformed edge, a virtualized um, edge, um, you're able to deliver upon the promise of um, enhanced mobile br uh, broadband, um, ultra reliable low latency, um, as well as massive machine to machine communication. Um, but most importantly, um, you're also able to um, uh, deliver on things like you know reducing you know the backhaul costs um, as well as um, you know on-premise um, data security or data sovereignty. So how are edge solutions different from established cloud or um, on-premise solutions? I think it starts with how you define the edge. Um, I think uh, that you know you you can define the edge as everything from um, you know the the regional or local central offices and regional data centers um, all the way to the access you know the base stations the radio access um, the on-premise um, uh, equipment SD WAN UCP so it's everything between um, that um, and then based on the types of use cases and the types of requirements around latency or uh, or bandwidth requirements you can determine where in the edge locations you want to host those various types of um, use cases. So, um, so really depends, it's very location dependent, um, um, you know, uh, for, to host some of these use cases. So is edge just really a low latency story or is it in itself a, a value proposition? Not everything is going to be ultra low latency, um, and I think the more um, ultra low latency you want, then the closer to the extremes of the network you go. Um, a lot of um, the edge use cases can also be in the regional and local, you know, the next, next generation central offices, the NGCO, um, or the regional data center. So it's not all about you know low latency. It's also about um, um, it, it's what we call you know kind of defining the um, parameters around you know the, the the TCO, the security, the latency, the bandwidth. So you can choose to be closer to the core of the network in the next, next generation central office, uh, but you'll still be able to have better uh, bandwidth costs and um, uh, better security and better uh, better latency than in the core of the network. So what's Intel's solution and approach to the edge? It starts with you know being. Um, um, uh, NFV is foundational to both edge transformation as well as 5G. Um, I think um, you know we like to think of every edge location or every edge platform as being kind of a distributed data center. Um, and this distributed data center would have you know, compute network and storage capabilities. It would be virtualized. Um, it would be capable of um, um, you know, composable logical network slices that can deliver upon you know, various types of um, um, use cases with specific you know, quality of service requirements. So it's, uh, it's, it's really when we define the edge, it's, uh, it's these distributed data centers or micro clouds that then connect to the core of the network and then to the bigger um, uh, private, public, or hybrid cloud. And you, you mentioned uh, use cases and uh, very dependent upon what use cases, the, what, what solutions and applications, but what are some of these use cases and industries that are probably going to see most demand at the edge? The first one is probably um, what we call visual cloud, which is um, uh, media processing, immersive media, <clears throat> cloud graphics, cloud gaming. Um, you're going to see a lot of demand for this. I mean, we are all slaves to entertainment so and gaming, and so you're going to see um, a lot of demand for that, and, and, the, and that is so bandwidth and intensive that the closer it is to the, uh, um, again, to the edge and to the, uh, the consumer, the better it is. Um, we're also seeing a, a lot of demand for the edge use cases from enterprises. So enterprises like industrial control, um, 
retail, digital security surveillance, um, large financial um, institutions who want to keep data on premise for data sovereignty, um, industrial control for extremely low latency, um, retail, uh, they have so much, uh, so many uh, sensors with RFIDs and others, so sensor fusion, um, and they want to have secure transactions. Um, so all of this, um, you, you're seeing a lot of demand from these enterprises where there's a very, very viable business case um, to host these use cases or applications at the edge. So moving on to, to 5G, when do you expect to see real commercial deployments of 5G? Again, it depends on um, you know, how you define those commercial deployments. I mean, you can start to see them as early as now or next year because you can have um, 5G capable um, uh, you know, edge uh, nodes that can deliver on the low latency and bandwidth and machine-to-machine um, -machine communication. Uh, but I think um, if you truly envision 5G as being, you know, um, zero touch um, or automation, services provisioning, self-healing and self-learning, uh, resilient, elastic networks and, you know, an intelligent, programmable, scale scalable and composable network, um, I really think it's it's like 2020, and beyond, uh, I'm, uh, no, note that the sooner it is, the better it is for me. For coming from Intel, um, I'm not, a, we're not an operator, so. Uh, but I, but I think truly the vision of this, um, the the promise of 5G is really 2020 and beyond. And how can Intel help with the acceleration and deployment of 5G? So we are actually working with not only industry partners, um, equipment manufacturers, and software and hardware vendors, but we're also closely par uh, partnering with the communication service providers on various POCs and trials. Um, in fact, um, our, um, the, the South Korea Winter Olympics was a great example of a live 5G network. So you asked about deployments. Uh, I should have given you that example. Um, it was a live 5G network with um, 22 links across 10 sites and about 3,800 petabytes of data that was being uh, you know transmitted or um, the capacity was about 3,800 petabytes of data. So, so we are working very closely with the industry ecosystem and the service providers um, on POCs and trials and um, you know to support them in, um, in into deployments. And you mentioned the ecosystem there. How important is it that the ecosystem as a whole contributes and what role will the ecosystem play in developing 5G? An extremely important role, I think. No one company can do this by themselves. Um, I think the entire ecosystem, um, you know, contributing different elements of 5G and Edge um, is extremely important. And we need to, the more we can collaborate, the more we can um, reach out to address some of the pain points um, for mass scale um, uh, deployments of 5G, uh, the sooner, um, you know, that we all can look at um, uh, 5G deployments and also the true economic promise uh, of a 5G future. Renu, well thank you very much indeed for joining us on Telecom TV today. Thank you Guy, thanks for having me.